All right. Now, before we jump right into the uh, sprite editor, just a couple of quick points. When you go to make your new project, you want to make sure that this is set to 2D. This does a couple of things. Um, the main thing being that when you bring in sprite sheets, it automatically sets them to be as sprites. So you don't have to go back in and change the properties in their import settings. So that's one of the main features. And it automatically sets the uh, 2D mode in your viewport and things like that too. So make sure you set this to 2D when you make your project. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and import my sprites. And of course it's set them to texture type of sprites already and they're currently at sprite mode single so this the sprite system has uh, two settings here single and multiple single is just going to be like oh, okay this is a this is a sprite it's just an image of say only this wheel it's only one thing um, when you set it to multiple it uh, allows you to open up the sprite editor and start creating different sprites just by dragging your mouse over them like this now if I hit apply after creating all these slices it will now give me uh, a drop down of all of the sprites I just divided As you can see over in the bottom left it's cut everything up it's got my shocks there and the sprite editor showed me which one it's talking about here if I wanted a uh, quicker way to do that, if I had like tons of sprites on this sprite sheet, for instance, that I needed to slice up, then I could just go to slice type automatic. Now the advantage to uh, using automatic here and clicking slice is that it just cuts these things based on the extents that are available. So it automatically goes and finds all of the, what it views to be uh, extents of a particular area that's going to compose a sprite and it just cuts it for you so it saves you some time uh, versus doing it manually it's also very precise so if you look here it goes to that last pixel that's available and creates a like a one pixel bumper or something to well zero pixel bumper you know that's pretty tight knit right there and so it, it grabs the true extents of what you're working with here but uh, you know, if you wanted to go in and work on top of that, it's no big deal. That's just the initial way to get some slices going. You know, you can go back in and say, "I want this to be a sprite too," and uh, you know, I wanted to segment this part of the, um, oops, this part of the bike, you know, differently or something, and shrink all this down to maybe three different pieces. You know, whatever you want to do here, no big deal. And then if you don't like it, you can just go back to slice automatic. No big deal. There's also uh, pivot defaults, so if you click this sprite, you notice the pivot's right in the middle. Um, you can move this pivot wherever you want. Snap it to any of these sides or the corners, and uh, that's literally the pivot of the object. So if you wanted a different pivot for all of them, say you had a bunch of, uh, you know, like vines or something hanging down, and you knew that they were going to be pivoting about the top of the sprite when they were animated, you would just slice them from the top as the default pivot and then it shifts the pivot up to there so that can be handy too but in our case we just want everything on the center we're gonna slice on the center and there we go it's automatic boom alright so don't hit close you just hit apply and it actually cuts it up and then you can see all the sprites here and you're done so you can do that on this tile sheet as well, we'll change it to multiple and sprite editor, slice, automatic, slice, boom. That's a lot of sprites. We're done. Hit apply, close the box. Now we have heaps and heaps of sprites. Yeah, that was easy. That's basically how the sprite editor works then. So now if we want to use these sprites, it's pretty simple. We just click which one we want drag it into our scene and now we can start using it. That was really easy. Um, if it's not the right scale there's a couple of different ways to scale it. Generally you want to try and leave your sprites at 111 
and go into the actual sprite sheet component here and in the import settings you can change the pixels to units scale so if I change this to say 200 pixels per unit it would shrink because there's more pixels per unity unit allowed so if it was only to allow 100 pixels from this point here to that point there then this would obviously stretch up so the more pixels per unit that we uh, scale it at the smaller it gets so since we know that a person is about you know 1.7 meters tall uh, you know this bike is gonna be about right here with the wheels on it It'd be somewhere in there Let's see one well, that's two meters yeah that's probably about the right size it's close enough for what we're trying to do anyway so say 300 for the bike the tile sprite sheet we can do the same thing let's find a tile we want for the ground where's a good one Yeah, it looks like one that'll work. And if we wanted that to be bigger, we could just change the uh, import setting here. Say 70. Hit apply. It gets bigger. So the lower that number is, obviously, the more uh, artifacts you're going to get like this right here on this corner. Depending on the size of your images, you know, you'll want to tweak and finesse those settings on your importing. So, all right, now we got our bike started. Let's add in the other components and get them positioned correctly. So this is the hub here. Bring our rear wheel in. Bring the front wheel in, goes over here. And let's leave it at that for now. Now, uh, there's a couple of things we can do from here. We can look at the sorting, how this stuff is sorted. Uh, we need to change this pivot point back to here. Uh, the wheels look like their pivot points are good, right in the center. And this guy looks like he's okay. And after that, we can start rigging this, this up with the physics joint and set properties on that. So now that we know we want this pivot here, we can go to the bike, back to the sprite editor, and adjust this pivot back say the attachment is right there and we would do the same thing for the shocks when we go to edit them so let's just bring the shocks up to here as well right in the center and right in the center that'll allow these things to be pivoted uh, about the correct position so if I wanted this bike to pivot around the say center of gravity, I knew where that was, and I could just put it right here. I mean, that's probably about where it's at anyway. So I hit apply, close this, and the sprites physically move in position. The pivots change, so the image in relation to the actual location of the object has shifted. All right, now this thing is supposed to be on this side of the wheel, so. Uh, the sorting layers system in the Unity 2D, if you look at this in 3D, it's all flat. Everything's in the same plane. So if we bring it back to 2D and set up some sorting layers, let's say we've got um, three of them. We're going to have the, uh, the uh, middle ground, foreground, and the background and we can set up uh, I guess we could put one for the bike and you can just drag these so we want the bike to be in front of the middle ground we want the background in the back and then the foreground in the front so you can just drag these to where you want them and the ones closer to the bottom are going to be in the front and the ones at the top will be in the back. So we want background, middle ground, then the bike in front of the ground, and then the stuff in the foreground is going to cull everything in its way. Okay, so then you go to the sprites that we just created in the scene, and to change the 
settings quickly, we can just shift click them all and then change this to bike. And then for each component, there's a sub order for clashing against its own, its sprites inside its own sorting layer. So uh, we want this guy to be the back. Main body will be in the back. Order in layer here will be one. That brings it in front of the wheel. This can stay at zero. And then this can stay at zero. So by shifting this onto the order in layer as one, it puts it in front of the wheels and the body, which are order in layer zero. They're both on the bike layer, but these little sub layers let you control what's in front of what on which layer. Okay, so that's how you do the sorting. Now we can set up a uh, little more accurate positions on this thing and get it tweaked a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started and we're going to move to the next video.